Welcome to the Commonwealth Policy Center Live. The election is just days away, and one of the most talked about items on the ballot is not regarding a candidate. It's regarding Constitutional Amendment Number 2. It's an amendment that would make clear that abortion is not a protected right under the Kentucky Constitution. But opponents of the measure say that it's politicians trying to ban all abortions and meddling in a very personal choice that should be reserved to a pregnant woman and her doctor. Joining us to talk further about this issue is Kentucky State Senator Whitney Westerfield from Crofton and Senator Don Douglas from Nicholasville. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Hello, Richard. Thank you for having me. I think it's important that we start out with some context here. Uh, Amendment 2, which you all voted for last legislative session back in 2021, says this, to protect human life, nothing in this constitution shall be construed to secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. Uh, you both were involved with a press conference with uh, 26 of your colleagues in the Senate and in the House um, speaking out about a lot of the misinformation that has been pushed by a group called Kentucky, Protect Kentucky Access. And Senator Westerfield, I wanna start with you. You had some particularly strong words about the misinformation campaign, about what the amendment does and what it doesn't do. I'll start out with you. What, what do you see, what was the purpose in, uh, first of all, voting for this constitutional amendment and putting it on the ballot for Kentucky voters? Well, thanks for, again, for having us, Richard. I think uh, putting this on the ballot was very prescient. We passed this, as you indicated, in the 2021 regular session. Of course, it wasn't going to be on a general election ballot for voters until now. Uh, but when we did it, we, you know, I, I hope one day we'd see the reversal of Roe, but we didn't know when in the world that was going to happen. The Dobbs case had not yet found its way up to the Supreme Court, much less, much less had a decision on it. Um, so we did that with the hope that one day that would be something that, uh, that we could put in our Constitution. But with the Dobbs case, it becomes incredibly important uh, for us to make clear what's, what's already perfectly clear from the Constitution today. Abortion's not there. It's not mentioned there anywhere, uh, but we want to make sure that our state court judges, particularly our appellate judges, can't contrive or concoct or, or fabricate out of whole cloth um, some right to abortion that our Constitution doesn't provide. What this amendment would do is protect and prevent our state courts from deciding their own Roe or their own Casey decision and casting a dark shadow of abortion and death of unborn life for the next 49 years here in the Commonwealth. Yeah, that's very good. Senator Douglas, I'd like to bring you in. Uh, you're fairly new to the state legislature. Uh, you have been in for part of a term. This is your first full election, correct, that you are um, on the ballot. Uh, the life issue is important to you. You did not have it. Did you have a chance? I can't recall. Did you vote on uh, the constitutional amendment? Did you have a chance to vote on this last 2021? Um, the amendment was was actually passed before I got there. Okay. And, and the reason I ask that is that gives some context uh, to, I guess, when you've joined the discussion. What are you hearing from your constituents? Are, are they buying into the misinformation campaign? Are they believing that it um, is going to ban all abortions, that it meddles in an important decision between a woman there are, and her there, doctor? There, there are. The, uh, you mentioned that protect, protect Kentucky Access which is a deceptive, uh, deceitful name to begin with. This, uh, this amendment has nothing to do with protecting or prohibiting or restricting access to abortion whatsoever. Not a bit. This will not ban abortion. In fact, if this amendment passed, abortion uh, champions could still vote and elect legislators to make abortion policy all day long if that's what they wished to do. But you mentioned that group. They have outraised the pro-life community by orders of magnitude. I think a five or six to one fundraising advantage. And they flooded the airwaves, text messages, uh, digital ads, radio, TV, mail pieces with outright lies. And they have convinced some, some of my constituents, anyway, I won't speak for Senator Douglas, but I've met people uh, who I go to church with or who I know go to church elsewhere in our area who have taken those lies in. And they are, they are convinced that this is going to somehow interrupt abortion access or prevent us from being able to 
pass laws that allow for exceptions for the life of the mother or, or whatever else, or <clears throat> that it would interfere with fertility treatments, all of which is preposterous. Yeah. None of that is true. Yeah. Uh, and so it's frustrating and, and sad because I know there are people who have cast votes already with early voting as we're recording this we're out here on Friday uh, and talking. Early voting has been going on for the better part of two days now. And there are people who have cast a vote based on lies uh, by these out of state uh, abortion extremists. So I'm I'm glad that you're giving attention to this and that Senator Douglas and I and all of our pro-life colleagues in both parties can set the record straight and make sure people know what the truth is. Yeah. Uh Senator Westerfield, just to give you an update on the funding uh, the, by uh, Protect Kentucky Access, they've raised almost nine million dollars. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and close to, to, our, that. to the pro-life communities, less than a million, I guess. It's less than a million. Uh, Come with Policy Center is part of the Yes for Life Alliance, and uh, we've raised just over nine hundred thousand um, dollars as of today. So we have been outspent, outraised. Uh, the head of Protect Kentucky Access is from. Kansas. Rachel Sweet was the spokesperson in Kansas that helped to defeat that measure. She moved to Louisville uh, back in the summer, and most of the money is coming from out of state. Planned Parenthood, the ACLU, uh, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg, uh, big money coming from the West Coast, coming from the East Coast. Uh, very little of it is from Kentucky, by the way. That's Senator right. Doug Douglas, I'd like to turn it to you. Many of the uh, ads that Protect Kentucky Access is running uh, say that this would prevent a woman from getting medical care if there is a, a life-threatening situation where she has, let's say, an ectopic pregnancy. Some are saying that this could prevent her from getting care related to a miscarriage. As Senator Westerfield said, there's some are saying that it could prevent uh, in, uh, IVF, in vitro fertilization, and reproductive technologies. Can you speak to that? You are a doctor. You come from a medical background. Can you speak to, does this amendment, first of all, would this ban or prevent women from getting care in those situations? Well, Richard, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for having me. And, and the answer to that question is no. I've actually spoken to um, fertility doctors uh, here in Kentucky, and that was a concern that they had. They, had, they called me up personally. So we personally sat down and read the amendment. To, to my surprise, many of them had never read the amendment. They yeah. were simply going by what they'd been hearing on TV. Let me expand that. Now, you know, earlier you would ask me uh, off camera what some of my constituents were saying. And, and, and what, I, what I find in my constituents is, is that many of them are, are very, very confused. Just like Senator Westerfield said, many of them in their hearts knew what knew what, uh, what direction they were gonna go in, but then they're watching all of these things on TV and hearing things on the radio. And, and fortunately, I've been telling my constituents, call me, we'll talk about it. And so when we go over the amendment, they said, that's not what they're saying on TV. That's not what they're saying on the radio. And I say, you know, one of the problems that we have is the misinformation that, it, that, that gets put out there and that we all get bombarded bombarded with. Some of the concerns that they have, actually, it, it, at least in, in my district, is that many people are using uh, or wanting this, this abortion as a form of birth control. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, I, I, I put that in the category of being sad. The other thing I address often is the, the use of um, uh, the medical, medical illness. And I have to explain to them, pregnancy is not a medical illness. It is a medical condition. And in fact, for, for, for women who are having babies, it's a normal medical condition. Uh, it is not a life-threatening medical condition unless there is a complication. And that's no different, I gotta share with you, than, than, than having a pneumonia or some other thing that, that for which there is uh, um, uh, a, a complication. So, it, this doesn't this, this doesn't prevent a woman from seeking an abortion. I'm just encouraging people to read, actually read the amendment. You know, one other thing I want to throw in here, Richard, is is that w when when my patients talk to me or when my uh, um, constituents talk to me about abortion being used as uh, birth control, I, br I bring up some of the statistics that are out there for anyone to take a look at. Look. 
in, 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 19, in 1990, 28% of the children were born out of wedlock. Now, I'm not getting into the moral side. I'm simply saying, this is what affects our economy. This is what affects our social system. Well, in 2022, that number was up to 40% of our children are being born out of wedlock. People also make the argument in, in the case of rape and incest. In Kentucky, that number is less than 1% of abortions performed in the Commonwealth of Kentucky are, born, are, are, are performed for either rape or incest. And in some of the studies, it's even less than 0.5%. So a lot of these arguments that we're, that we're listening to have no medical basis. Dr. Douglas, one of the uh, Facebook posts recently uh, has gone viral. There are people from both sides of the uh, issue weighing in, but there's an interesting post on there. And I've seen this term come up recently in the last couple of months, but one of the uh, people said, say no to forced births, forced births. Can you speak to that? Is there such a thing as a forced birth? I mean, we, I think we know what they're getting at, but this is a fairly new term to me, or maybe maybe I've just have not heard it. But uh, I mean, is this a uh, is this something that this amendment uh, does? Does it provide? Does it force births? No, it doesn't. Actually, Richard, you know, it, it's it's really interesting. We always want to go to the end point or that point which serves us the best. Mm -hmm. The truth is. Uh, I'm very candid with, with my constituents and with other people in the Commonwealth when they ask me this question. We know how pregnancy occurs. It is not a secret. Mm -hmm. My biggest concern, one of my biggest concerns about this whole situation is, is what we're doing to our, to our women. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when people talk about um, uh, the, the uh, people being assaulted and women becoming, you know, uh, becoming um, pregnant as a, as a result of assault, and we and we've already we've already established it's one percent or less of the women who have abortion secondary to that. My biggest concern is women go through an assault, and then they're being told just have the abortion. And in fact, three out of four in Kentucky, three out of four assaults were not reported to authorities last year. So we are assaulting our women. We're not taking care of our women. And then we're telling them it's okay for you to have an abortion. So we're assaulting them a second time. And they have to live with these memories. Anyone who has spoken with many of the folks in this situation will get will, will understand that. So my biggest concern is we are allowing, we are asking the law to allow our women to be assaulted a second time. Yeah, I, I Don is right. Senator Douglas is right. That I think that's it's another deceitful lie filled uh throwaway line uh, that the opposition chooses to use to muddy the issue and to confuse things. First of all, again, this amendment doesn't ban anything. It doesn't ban anything. It doesn't change access to abortion. It does allow the legislature to subsequently change abortion access or expand it, restrict or expand. Tomorrow's legislature uh, would probably restrict it somewhat, but the legislature 10 or 20 years from now might expand it all day long. This amendment would allow both. It's to make sure judges who are far less accountable to the electorate aren't the ones setting policy, making stuff up out of whole cloth, out of thin air in our Constitution, which doesn't provide for it. What Dr. Or Senator Douglas, Dr. Douglas just was talking about is 100 percent true, though. That line that it's forced birth uh, ignores the fact that the alternative is forced death. Mm. It's forced murder of an unborn innocent child that God made in his image. It's also uh, deceptive in that it doesn't uh, tell people the truth that abortion causes forced trauma, forced guilt and shame. My wife, Richard, as you know, for many years served as the director of the Crisis Pregnancy Center here in Hopkinsville. And before that, we were both active as volunteers with that organization. I've talked to, and I've not nearly as much as my wife has, but she's talked to uh, hundreds of women who are abortion seeking or abortion minded when they walk in the door. Uh, and some of them are post aborted women who are looking for help and hope and love and compassion and understanding and grace. And they find that in the arms of the pro life community 
they don't find that in the arms of Planned Parenthood or all those donors that have sent nine million dollars to the Commonwealth to, to lie to women uh, into thinking this amendment does something it doesn't. Um, I, I think that shows again the evil that's at work in that amendment uh, or in that uh, that the people that oppose the amendment. Uh, and I hate that because it it's it's prevailing on some of the voters. Yeah, Senator West. You know, Richard, yeah. just let, let me let me throw this in here. When I when I went and did a lot of my door knocking as, as I've been doing, I've been, I've had a few of my constituents ask me about what do I think about a woman's right to choose. My my question to them is choose what. Hmm. And they'll ask they'll ask the question a second time. They are extremely hesitant to ask a woman's right to choose abortion. And I suspect much of that is because they too feel that it is wrong, but they feel compelled to follow, to follow the group. We're talking about one subject here, yet we're having, we're having millions of dollars spent on a play on words, a women's right to choose. Choose what? That's a good point. To kill an unborn child. That's a very, very good point. Uh, the state legislature in the last six years, after the Kentucky House uh, was gained, uh, control was gained by Republicans there, 13 pro-life bills have been enacted into law. Bills ranging from chemical abortion restrictions, the fetal heartbeat bill, uh, live dismemberment abortion ban, uh, 10 other bills. The latest one was the Human Life Protection Act, uh, or I'm sorry, the Omnibus uh, Pro-Life Bill this last session dealt with a number of pro-life right. provisions. Mm -hmm. uh, Senator Westerfield, if, uh, if this amendment doesn't pass, does, uh, are those bills in jeopardy from an act? 100%. 100%. Uh, and, and there's already evidence of that, even post Dobbs, the trial court judge in Jefferson County, uh, which led to the case getting up to the Supreme Court. And again, folks that are watching this, there's a case sitting in the hands of the Kentucky Supreme Court right now. Oral arguments are set for about a week or so from now after Election Day and after they know what the results are on this amendment. And you can almost write the opinion right now from some of the liberal justices on our Supreme Court uh, if the amendment fails. I, I can assure you that every single one of those measures and any subsequent measures is jeopardy because our judges are going to do what the Supreme Court wrongly did 49 years ago. They will contrive and create out of thin air a right to an abortion that does not exist. You can read our Constitution. I encourage you to do that. Everyone should. Every citizen should. You won't find abortion in there. You won't find anything that makes reference to that, even tangentially, even a little bit. But our U.S. Constitution didn't either. The court in uh, 73, the U.S. Supreme Court in 73 decided to create a right. Uh, it was shaped and, and changed a bit in 92 with the Casey decision. Our Supreme Court in Kentucky will do the same thing. It's where all of these challenges are going to start going now that Dobbs has been made the law of the land, because now the, the, the door to protecting abortion access in federal courts is shut with the Dobbs decision. All of those challenges are going to start showing up in state courts and they're all going to make their way to the Kentucky Supreme Court eventually, just like the case that they're waiting on right now. I feel like all of them are in jeopardy, every single one. Uh, it, it underscores the importance of this amendment. If this does not pass, there is a real possibility, as you mentioned, of having an activist judge striking down any number of Kentucky's pro-life laws. But also Kentucky could become a mecca for uh, abortion uh, clinics. Uh, well, I, I think I, I don't want to interrupt you, Richard, but I don't know if you've seen the story, but Planned Parenthood is is uh, acquiring all these RVs to have mobile clinics mm -hmm. and they'll send them everywhere. Mm -hmm. They'll send them everywhere. Uh, as soon as they have the opportunity, the access to to offer abortions again in Kentucky, they'll send them wherever they must. Uh, in the meantime, they'll send them on the borders. And remember what companies are doing since the Dobbs decision, there was a, a, a a rush of companies, global enterprises that have just fallen on over themselves trying to offer money to cover travel expenses to go to other states, uh, changing their health care policies to include the, those abortion expenses in other states. Uh, 
tragically, those same companies aren't offering the same thing for adoption expenses or travel mm -hmm. to do adoption. Mm -hmm. Imagine the life changing things they could do for good if they offered that same sort of coverage for moms and dads like Amanda and me or others uh, who are adoptive parents and would love to do that. Uh, it, it's a shame to see that, but that you're going to see them activate uh, in Kentucky all over again if this amendment fails. Of course, that would affect you, Senator Westerfield. You're uh, in Hopkinsville and Nashville is just down the road. Not very Just down far. the road. Uh, and Tennessee has one of the most restrictive pro-life pro -life protection laws on the books right now. Uh, Senator Douglas, uh, there was a story in the Louisville Courier Journal Wednesday. It said that Kentucky Republican Party poised to expand supermajority, but Democratic hopes hinge on one factor. So what's that one factor? According to this article, they say that some Democratic strategists are pinning their hopes on abortion rights. What's your take? You're out in the field knocking on doors. You've held office for uh, a, a short while in the state legislature. Um, is abortion rights an issue that is swaying voters, at least in your district? Is that an issue that voters are, are, uh, are, are engaging and voting on? I think it certainly is an issue that is confusing people because of the, uh, the advertisements that they see. Mm -hmm. I think in, at their base, no, it isn't. I think ultimately our voters in, in, in certainly my district will not vote on that one particular issue. I think those who favor it, we're going to vote anyway. But, but as far as uh, my, my door knocking, what, I, what I've mostly encountered are folks asking me if I would explain the amendment to them. And once, once I explained the, the amendment to them, they really were okay with that. Okay, very good. Senator Westerfield, what, uh, do you have any thoughts on a major political party whose uh, political consultants and strategists are saying Democratic candidates run on reproductive freedom, and I use that in quotes, and on abortion rights? Do you have any commentary on a major political party that's advising that and pinning their hopes on that for victory this next election? Well, I, I, first, uh, from a moral standpoint, I think it's a, I think it's a tragic failure uh, for a party to attach itself to, to a culture of death like that. Uh, to not stand up for women, for unborn children, and for the lives of future Kentuckians, uh, so many of whom we've lost in the last 49 years in Kentucky. Uh, from a political standpoint, uh, I, we've seen, I've seen polling that suggests it's really important to people, but I don't know that it's important as inflation and other economic factors are right now. Uh, on a national level, we've seen them, uh, we've seen the whole Democratic Party apparatus change tack just in the last seven to 10 days. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, they they were hoping to, to, to gin up a lot of support for the abortion issue generally, not just in Kentucky and elsewhere. When, and we've got a ballot initiative, obviously, but that's not the case ever in every state. Um, I'm not sure it's quite the motivating factor that Democrats hope that it is. Uh, and I hope I'm right and they're wrong um, uh, and that they've mm -hmm. pinned their hopes to something that doesn't get their folks out because uh, I want the amendment to succeed. Uh, and, I, and I want Kentucky to, to embrace a culture of life. Uh, so I, I hope um, I hope that's what happens on Tuesday. We're going to be prepared for it regardless. Uh, and, and as I've said to others, I'm optimistic. I think the amendment can pass. Uh, I know uh, it certainly uh, has the opportunity to be successful uh, on Tuesday. Uh, but the same God that reigns today reigns on Wednesday of next week. Uh, and I trust that he is a, a God that values life because he created it. And we're going to keep standing up for it in Kentucky uh, in whatever constitutional circumstance we face. Yeah, very good. Senator and Richard, Richard, I'd also yeah. like to interrupt you and just to simply say this. With respect to whether or not this is truly going to influence the voters of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, we also have to remember we, we still are emerging from what was a long pandemic. And during that period of time, we saw uh, a, um, we saw a history made when we had a governor who made decisions for people in the Commonwealth that we now find were very, very poor decisions. And ha it ha has been very detrimental to our schools, has been very detrimental to our economy. But many, many people were worried about their rights being violated. We still have those people who are in a highly charged state worrying about their, 
their rights being violated. So, so when we use the term, your right to choose, we're essentially asking them, are you gonna let your rights be violated? So let's keep that in mind. Yeah. Senator Douglas, we're gonna, we've got just a, a couple minutes here until we close. Uh, do you have a sense as to how the elections, maybe any predictions as to uh, what happens, first of all, in the legislative realm? Do, do you s expect Republicans to pick up any seats in the state legislature across the state? And then any predictions on Amendment 2? Yeah, Richard, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this election. I think that the Republican Party, uh, with our last session, showed what it is that we stand for. We actually passed a lot of very wonderful bills that, that are going to help the families and businesses in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I think because of that, the people of the Commonwealth realize that we have their best interests at hand, as opposed to what they uh, have been seeing um, over over the last the, the last couple of years from the executive branch. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very very enthusiastic. Very good, Senator Westerfield. Any predictions on the election on November the eighth? I think I think both chambers are going to pick up some seats. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the House versus Kentucky, but I know in the Senate I expect us to pick up one or maybe two seats. Um, I haven't seen any polling, but I know what the races are like. I know what the candidates are like, and I think. I think we're going to be an even bigger caucus than we left at the end of the 22 regular session. Um, I'm hopeful that Amendment 2 passes. Um, I know we're pulling out all the stops. Um, people who have been out spent have won races before. I'm proof of that. <laughs> and, uh, the most money doesn't always win. That's right. Uh, and I trust that uh, the truth will out and, and that people will know and that a prevailing number of Kentuckians, a majority of Kentuckians that vote between now and Tuesday when the polls close, will realize the importance of protecting life, but more importantly, uh, and more immediately to this amendment, making sure that policymakers are the ones that set policy, not judges yeah. in either party. Uh, and I think that's something we can all agree on. Um, I know that people who oppose this amendment think it does a lot of things that it doesn't. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm praying and hoping that, that the truth will find its way to everybody that needs to cast a vote between now and Tuesday. And I'm thankful for the Commonwealth Policy Center putting an emphasis on this and making sure that, that the mm -hmm. message of truth gets out there so that people know what's right and what's wrong. All right. Thank you so much. Senator Douglas, any final words? Well, again, I, I think the bulk of this particular um, <laughs> election is going to be based on people's pocketbook and their homes. The, 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 high cost, uh, the high cost of food, the high cost of gas, the crime that we're seeing each and every day, not just, not just on TV, but we're hearing about it in our neighborhoods. That's what I think is going to push uh, people to vote Republican during this particular um, election. All right, very good. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on CPC Live. Keep up the good work. God bless you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank, thank you, Richard. You, Richard.